Hi guys, welcome back to another psych video. Today we're going to explore the socio-cultural level of analysis. So this is our question, outline principles that define the socio-cultural level of analysis. This is an SAQ question, which means it is worth eight points, and outline is a command term, which means give a brief account or summary. Let's look at an overview. First, we're going to explore the socio-cultural level of analysis. Then we're going to look at four principles that define this. What is the socio-cultural level of analysis? It is the scientific study of how people's thoughts, feelings, and thus behaviors are influenced by actual, implied, or imagined presence of others. So these relate to social norms, conformity, compliance, and whatnot. These are the principles of the socio-cultural level of analysis. First, human beings are social animals and we feel a need to belong. Second, social or cultural environment influences or affects behavior. Third, humans have a social self. Fourth, people's view of the world are resistant to change. Let's look at principle one. It says the biological and cognitive makeup of an individual are part of a larger system of relationships with others. So a person's thoughts are not restricted to his or her own behavior and cognitive factors. It's actually um, a combination of one's individual thoughts and also social norms and the group thoughts and what the group thinks. And also relationships are bi-directional, which means an individual can influence a group and a group can influence the individual. So it's very well demonstrated by Ash's conformity experiment conducted in 1951. You don't have to know the details, you don't have to write an essay about this, but it's good to know a brief summary. So the Confederates, while they were planning this experiment, they were told to um, have a fixed answer to a question. So um, the question was shown in this figure here. It says A, B, C, and then there's lines, and then there's a question mark with another line. And they were asked, um, which is this line most similar to in terms of shape and size? And obviously the answer is C for this question, but um, even for this obvious answer, Ash wanted to see if people conform to other people, the other confederates saying a different answer, and this actually happened. So people, so after about 12 trials, about 75% of participants confirmed at least once, and 25% of the participants never conformed. And in the control group, where no pressure was to conform to the confederates, where confederates um, had their own answers, less than 1% gave the wrong answer. This shows people's yield to group pressure, whether it's real or imagined, and social norms influence beliefs, values, and morals to fit in. Now let's look at principle two. It states social and cultural environment affects and influences behavior. So culture is defined as norms and values that define a society. This is demonstrated by the social learning theory proposed by Albert Bandura. He also had an experiment relating to this, relating to dolls and if children would copy an adult's behavior um, on hitting the dolls or being nice to dolls and whatnot. But here, let's just look at a brief overview because this is just an SAQ. We don't have to have a lot of studies to support this. Um, and it's the social learning theory states that learning can be carried out by vicarious learning or imitating Role models. So this follows the ARM procedure. So just memorize it as ARM. So it says attention. We must pay attention to a certain behavior for us to learn something. So we first just see something and allow our sense perception to just realize what's going on. Then retention. We need to remember the behavior we have seen. Reproduction or motor reproduction is replicating the behavior or that was observed or trying to replicate the behavior. And motivation is we must be motivated to replicate the behavior or we will not do it in the first place. Second, principle three states that humans have a social self. Along with their personal identity, they have group membership. So group membership gives rise to social identities. So for example, in the death of Princess Diana, people didn't really know her, pers um, know her person to person, but um, pe a lot of people mourn like it was the death of a family member. So this is their social identity. They're part of this country, so they mourn for the death of Princess Diana. Also, people have more than one individual identity, yet they have an identity themselves, but they can be part of the jock group, the nerd group, or whatever um, they have in schools. But they can also be like a more physical group, like the environment club, the MUN people. Like, they're all, they have their own identities, right? There's also division into in-groups and out-groups, which cause out-group um, and in-group bias and stuff like that. And this is also supported by social identity theory proposed by Henry Th Tachville. And it follows four processes, social categorization, social identity, social comparison, and positive distinctiveness. So social categorization is deciding which group you or another person belongs to. Social identification is where a person identifies with an in-group. And social comparison is your own self-concept or social concept becomes closely um, combined with our, the perceptions of other 
out group membership and positive distinctiveness is when a social group is made to appear more positive because it's like their in group so it's related to the in group bias now lastly principle four people's views of the world are resistant to change a world view can be defined as the way the world is understood so how it's supposed to work, why does it works the way it does, and what values are essential to the community. And the culture shapes helps shape our worldviews. And there's also other kind of manners and norms in our Asian culture, and there's things that are regarded as morally correct. So that's our worldview. Um, and a sense of self is developed through social and cultural context, basically what I said before. Um, you know, I have my own Asian identity that is developed by what, how I was raised and my environment. So. That is it. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you guys liked it. So next week is my final exams for this, so I need to do a lot of reviewing. But um, this is this making this video is helping me a lot. So thank you guys so much for watching, and bye.